Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man. Always I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Before I start this video and give you a title, I just want to introduce you to the latest members of my family. I'm just trying to move this camera over so you can see these guys. They're called A, B, and C. I love animals. I've always had a love for animals even as a small kid so i just thought i would show you those so let me turn the camera back over okay i'm going to entitle this video because i did a video a while back called uh what happened to the snare and when i in that video i talk about how when the teddy riley era left for ushered out and the What's that other guy named? Timberland era rushed in. All those beautiful snares that doing that New Jack era, you know, real snappy, compressed, poppy snares got replaced with some finger claps, some damn finger snapping. And it's like, man, it just kind of took the punch out of R&B music when this new era ushered in and, you know, all these great snares went away. And it's kind of the same thing uh, a lot of people might not notice it because I'm going to entitle this video. What happened to the Tom Toms? Because, of course, back in the 70s when R&B had real drummers, you had these drum rolls. Because unless, with, with the exception of drummers, because what I'm about to say, of course, drummers know this. But I guess, you know, just the average singer or the drum, uh, guitar player, bass player don't realize this. And I was fortunate enough that I pay attention to all the instrumentation and in the music circle you know what are the drums doing what are the keyboards doing what is the the guitar player doing what is the other guitar player doing what is the bass player doing you know what are the what are they doing harmony wise you know uh, so i was fortunate to pick up on that stuff when i was a teenager because i hung around guys that did it and showed me you know and uh as far as you know the drums then the tom toms normally in crashes indicate the song is going to a different section of the song, you know, meaning that you're at the verse right now. Okay, now you're about to go into the chorus. So the drums, the, the drummer would indicate that by doing a roll or a crash, you know, so you know that there's something else coming coming on. But uh, nowadays, you know, uh, the Tom Toms, what, I think the Tom Toms left, it's really hard for me to say when, because I know when the drums left, when, uh, like I said, when uh, Timberland came in, that's when the snares went away. Uh, you know, uh, his era. I forgot the style of music or the, what he called his style of music. But, of course, Teddy Rice was New Jack Swing. But uh, somewhere along the line, and I can't really pinpoint it, but the Tom Toms went away too. It's like, where are the snares and the Tom Toms to indicate the change in the song? Because that's why I love playing all styles of music because you learn so much from different styles of music you know i learned a lot from playing rock you know most of those guys play what's called a fifth chord which is two notes with distortion uh you know and just other things that i've picked up by just playing different styles of music because uh, it's kind of interesting i had somebody send me an angry email and i read the top of it skimmed across the top and skimmed across the bottom and deleted and blocked them because i'm like i'm not reading toxic garbage and i'm not responding to toxic garbage because uh one of the uh, the, the statements was you're a closed man musician how am i a closed man musician i play everything and i'm open to everything but uh i do shoot down garbage and bullshit i'm sorry you know if you don't like that that's you know that's your prerogative you know uh that's your opinion i respect it like i want you to respect mine it's because i don't agree with you now you want to get into this verbal entanglement i think not I left the playground back in the 70s, okay? I'm a grown man, so I don't have time to be arguing with idiots. You know, it's just plain and simple. But, uh, you know, as far as just how things have gotten watered down arrangement-wise, because as you guys know, I'm working on the CD, and I was going to be finished in January because I work pretty fast, not to be confused with working fast, fast and sloppy. You know, I know what I want. I lay it down and I'm done and I move on to the next project because I've learned a lot from Babyface because Babyface like, had like a musical factory going on, just cranking out hits. And it was he was throwing garbage together and giving it to people. They were well arranged songs. So I tried to pattern my work ethic around him because I'm like, uh, if he can crank out a couple of songs a day or a week, I won't do the same. And I was doing it, you know. But unfortunately, uh, you know, the arrangement thing has kind of, you know, fell by the wayside because 
what oh, okay i'm losing my thought uh i'm working on the cd and uh at some point in time i said to myself i'm going to basically kind of go in a different direction but i'm going to talk about that in another video that i'm going to post called uh your sound as a musician as a band member so i'm not going to go into that here but uh it's just things that you notice as far as how some things are taken away from from the arrangement or the mix because again somewhere along the line the time times kind of disappear and it's like where are the time times you know and this is only happening in r&b music now techno always had a different format from day one so i'm not going to include that into this discussion because uh that's a whole different animal but you know what uh, that's why i study motown that's why I study Marvin Gaye, the 70s. You know, that's why I study the 80s. I studied the 90s because at that point, the 90s was still cranking on some really nice R&B stuff. The stuff now. And of course, I sound like an old man ranting. But I'm like, no, I mean, we all have a legitimate, you know, statement to make when it comes to that. Because uh, in, in, in a perfect world, when things progress, they get better. It's like, yeah, I remember that little tiny TV you used to watch around the house. It was 10 of us sitting around the 9-inch TV with a little hanger sticking out the back, adjusting the, uh, the, the, the reception every five minutes. You know, now we got these big old plasma TVs to give you great detail. And it's like, that's how every aspect of life should be, that it just gets better. But unfortunately, there's some aspects of life get worse, you know. And uh, just like I was watching TV today, some idiot went into a church and killed 26 people. 26 innocent ass people one of them was a two-year-old child now what kind of rationale do you have to do what you did you know other than you're trying to get attention and that's what it's about you know uh tv is a good thing but now tv becomes a bad thing because bad people use it as a platform to do dumb ass shit you know and it's like uh they want attention and then, then they go about getting that attention in a very horrific way and it's just it's just messed up you know, we all like to, if, and when we get a certain point in our life, we all like to kind of look back and say, man, I like to go back to the 60s, to the 50s, where on a Sunday nobody worked and they sit on their porch rocking their little chair and drinking lemonade and just acknowledge the people that came up and down the street. You know, and still, now you turn on TV, one crazy dude want to go climb into, or go into a motel, a hotel room and start shooting down, killing people or walking up in the churches. You know, it's just unfortunate in some aspects of our lives it's getting worse. But in some, it's getting better, you know, but forgive me for digressing. But uh, again, you know, I tend to notice these things as far as things are going away musically. And it's like uh, it's not a good thing, you know, because, uh, again, I just did a DVD package. And you did, guys definitely want to jump on this one. Uh, what's that? 20 uh, Motown songs, part two, Motown Madness, 20 songs, only 30 bucks, which is less than two dollars. It's a lesson. The reason why you want to jump on that because the structure, because a lot of times you don't know how good you're getting until later, you know, because I, I used to listen to that kind of stuff when I was a teenager and then I started to play it, not realizing that it was helping my my ability to write songs and range on myself, you know, but that's what it does. You know, I strongly encourage you guys, you know, to, to spend the money on that because those are some great songs that, you know, that I compile you know, as opposed to, again, and I'm not knocking the new stuff, but the new stuff, two chords rocking back and forth, ma ma mainly minus seven chords just back and back and forth. You know, that's just the whole summary of a lot of R. Kelly stuff. And I'm not knocking, knocking R. Kelly. Play behind him. He's a, a, a living legend to me. I knew when uh, the first week that I played behind him at the China Club in Chicago back in the, I think it was the early 90s. I knew that, and, and I said this to the band members, and they laughed. I said, man, that man going to be a legend. He's going to be a rock and roll Hall of Fame. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he can sing, but no. I'm like, trust me, because I felt I'm like, same thing with Prince. When I first heard his first two albums, I was like, this guy's a genius. You know, I will give him that status on a certain level, because before I was like, N -n -n -n. but I'm not getting into that Prince argument with these people, so I'm going to leave that alone. But uh, they're special people. I knew that when, uh, when I first started listening to Prince stuff. I knew when I first started listening to R. Kelly stuff. Uh, Indy Aria, she's another special one, a, a, a legend, you know, a build, a makings of a legend. Of course, Stevie Wonder, and everybody knew that, you know. But uh, people laugh when I made that comment back in the 90s about R. Kelly. I said, okay, that's what I feel. For some reason, it's just this guy, he's special, you know, and he is, you know. 
So uh, I'm going to wrap this one up, but I just want to, you know, touch on how things you start to notice I'm missing. And I was like, what happened to the time times? Because, again, I know what happened to the snares in the, in, the, in the transition period when that happened. But at some point in time, we lost the time times. And it's important to have the time times because it helps you uh, differenti differentiate between the parts of songs. You know, because that's how I'm able to tab stuff so quickly because of I know structure of song. I know what's coming up. And I dissect it to say, uh, okay, this, this is the verse, so what chords are being used here? And in most cases, different chords are used in the chorus, unless you're Sheik and Ray Parker Jr. A lot of people didn't catch that. Sheik just had like maybe four chords in their songs. And those same chords went from the verse to the chorus. The only difference is they changed up the rhythm. Same thing with Ray Parker Jr. You changed up the rhythm where it makes it sound like it's different sets of chords being played, but it was the same. But on that note, I'm going to sign off because uh, I don't want uh, make this too long of a video then i'm kind of venturing off into different uh topics so forgive me for that till next time take care say goodbye to a b and c